<clears throat> testing one two testing one two welcome back family welcome to those of you that are watching this video on demand and welcome to those of you who will be joining me live you are back live in the studio with none other than your favorite world-renowned author and storyteller matt d talford okay author of some amazing books for which there are links in the description box if you want to check them out. And I promise you want to check them out. What's up? We got Hot Shot in the house. We got Hot Shot in the house. What's up, Hot Shot? How you doing tonight? We got the family in. Listen, I'm going to play some jazz music for y'all while we getting started here. I'm going to give a couple of minutes. I like to get a quorum hot shot of about three people minimum, three to five before we get started. I don't have much of a singing voice today. I spent a lot of time on the phone today, so it won't be any vocals from me today. But... We got some nice uh, jazz numbers coming for y'all. So I'm going to sip this coffee, get your favorite drink, and get ready because uh, we got some questions to ask. She said, I'm good, 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 good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. How was your day today? Listen, um, I'm excited about this video tonight, y'all. And believe it or not, even with everything that's going on in the world, I'm excited about what's coming up next week, all right? A lot of people are scared. A lot of people are nervous. But we know fear is low vibrational and we the high, we high vibrational over here. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. So what I'm going to do is I'm here to take the stinger out of the fear for y'all. Now, that's not to say that we're not going to be aware of what's happening because we are. But I'm here to take the stinger out. All right. We're going to take the stinger out of the fear factor. So when we get started in just a minute, what I'm going to do is first off, I want to know why my music ain't playing. Hold on a minute, y'all. I got some royalty-free music up for y'all tonight, so YouTube can't mess with me. Nobody tripping. Here we go. You know what? Let me go ahead and uh, check this connection now because I don't want no trouble. So give me a second here. Let me play a little jazz music here while we're getting started. It's a little royalty-free jazz. Set the mood. Here we go. Here we go, right? Now give me a minute. Let's switch this up on y'all tonight. How we want to do this, Matt? Eh, I'll keep it here for now. It might be okay. It might be okay. We'll keep it here for now. But if I need to go to my backup, we'll go to my backup. Let me find a different track. That one a little noisy. Let's get a different one. I like that. I like that. I like that. I don't know who this artist is, but um, she said, my day was awesome. Do you think tonight I'm all ears? That's what I'm talking about. Loving the workout videos. Keep them going. Keep them going. You're inspiring the kid over here because I slacked off a little bit in March, but I'm going to be back on it in April. OK, OK, I'll be back on in April. Now, this is what we're going to do, family. We're going to start off with some scripture, right? Let me turn this down. We might as well get started. I got four people in the house. I don't want to keep you because I'm late getting started tonight. I got four people in the house. Let's go ahead and turn the music off and get this party started, all right? Let me give y'all the overlay. You're watching Maddie's Rap with, with author and storyteller Matt D. Talbert. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. And for those of you that are returning subscribers, welcome back, baby. Y'all know I love you. She said, yes, that's my jazz beat, and thank you. You are very welcome. Okay, now, I ain't trying to spill, spill nothing on myself, okay? Anyway, now, here we go. What are we talking about tonight? We are talking about more eclipse talk, more eclipse. But surprisingly, we got the four letter gang, NASA, okay, NASA. They they got they got this uh, brilliance, double air quotes, brilliant idea to shoot some rockets at the up in the upper ionosphere or something. Now, some people have been saying shoot the rockets at the eclipse. We know that you cannot hit that sun, okay? Now, for those of you who know the co the construct of this planet, you know that the sun sits inside the firmament. The sun and the moon sit inside the firmament. Don't get mad at me if you believe that 1969 story. I ain't here to argue that with you. Believe, what I, believe whatever you want, okay? When you know the construct, then you know. But we ain't going to argue that tonight, okay? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start off with some scripture. Why? Because I really should have my fatigues on tonight because this is like spiritual warfare. This really is spiritual warfare. I should I should have thrown my army jacket on. 
But I ain't feel like it tonight, y'all. So late night, I had some errands to run. I had to go pick dad up, do some stuff for dad this evening. That's why I'm late getting started. But we back here. So here's the deal. For those of you who are watching this on demand, I'll see if I can't remember to mark this thing at around 530. It's at the 530 mark. So for those of you that don't like the opening intro stuff, you can skip right to the meet. We'll, we'll, we'll try to make that happen for you all. Okay. So now the word. What's the scripture say? The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So we coming with the sword tonight, y'all. We coming with the sword. Why? Because this is spiritual warfare. We got mofos. I'm going to try to keep it clean, all right? I'm, I'm in a mood. I'm going to try to keep it clean, though. We got mofos that are out here saying, welcome, by the way, if you're coming in, you knew, just join it. Welcome. Do me a huge favor and smash that like button, family, so we notify more people that this video is up and running. Okay? Do me a huge favor. Stop what you're doing. Hit that like button for me, okay? So now, here's what we're doing. We got mofos that are, I don't know why they do it, y'all. I don't know what gives some people the authority. What gives them the wherewithal? What gives them the gall, the gumption? What's up, Lady Dagger status? Always a pleasure to have you here, okay? All right. What gives some people the gall to make decisions for the entire world population? Oh, we're going to do this thing when the eclipse happens, okay? Make the, make decisions for the entire population of the United States. Well, um... We think it's good if we go up here and study the, you know what, speaking of that, speaking of that, I'm glad I thought about that, y'all. Speaking of that, I got something about y'all, boy. Let me let me put this up here right now, y'all, before I forget, because we're going to talk about y'all, boy, Bill G, too. Give me one second. Hang on. Because I want to talk about Bill Gates family. What's up, Sacred Boxing? All right, all right, I got you. I got you. I got you, Coach. What's up? Good to see you here. I want to talk about Bill Gates. I'm going to come back to him because we're going to deal with this CERN. But for those of you who have not heard, Bill Gates is tinkering with mosquitoes again, talking about he's doing good for the population, and he's going to release some GMO mosquitoes down in um where? Uh, uh, South America, Colombia. Okay. Here they go with the connection. Here they go. Let me get it started. I knew this was going to happen, y'all. I knew it was going to happen. Let me let me go to my backup. Y'all give me one second here. Let me go to my backup. I knew this was going to happen. Stand by. Okay, I should be coming back in now. I should be coming back in. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Bill Gates for just a moment. I can't find that video. If I can find it before we get started, I will play it. But your friend, Bill Gates, Mr. Philanthropist, uh, no, no, number one world's philanthropist, doing all this good for the world, is releasing mosquitoes that he is funding research with where they're injecting these mosquitoes and doing all of this stuff on them and releasing them into the public for in the name of public health. Did, did anybody ask y'all for y'all opinion on how this stuff going? Look, let's get into some scripture, y'all. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm going to show y'all two things here, okay? Two things. One, let me set the tone for the night because y'all know how I do it. Let me set the tone because this is what's going down in the weeks and months after this eclipse. This is what's going down. Let me hit y'all right here, right out gate. Y'all know I told y'all, if you ain't talking prophecy and identity right now, you need to be talking prophecy and identity, all right? Because the two go hand in hand in this season. All right. Let's share this to the screen. She said, Billy just won't stop. <laughs> I, you know, you call him Billy. I like to call him Little Willie Gates. It's probably more appropriate. Y'all do what y'all will with that. Okay. Do what you will with it. All right. Little Willie, he's he's Bill Gates Jr. But y'all do what y'all want with that. I'm gonna call him Little Willie, you know. <laughs> if he grew up in the hood, he'd be Little Willie. All right, here we go. 
Jeremiah 16 and 19. This is this, this is this is this is setting the backdrop for tonight, y'all. Oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge. Now, y'all been watching me long enough to know that I rearranged the um what do you call it? What's the what's the word I'm looking for, y'all? Um, it is uh I don't know, periods and, and colons and stuff. It's late, y'all. I rearranged it, okay? Because it this reads to me wrong. It, this is how it should read. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge. In the day of their affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Verse 20, shall a man make gods unto himself and they are no gods? What are we talking about there? Verse 21, therefore, behold or look, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is, plug in the real name there, it ain't the Lord, okay? Yahuwah, Yahweh, different different names, people go by, whatever, okay? The Most High, whatever. It ain't, well, the Most High is a title too, that ain't the name. The name somewhere around Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahweh, whatever, okay? It ain't the Lord. Anyway. They gonna know his name. He said, I'm gonna cause them again to know my might. Okay, I'm gonna cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know what my name is. All right. But I don't think he's gonna slap nobody and say, What's my name? like Cassius Clay did. All right, let me get this off of here. That's the energy for tonight because somebody gonna find out what the lies are after he shows his might. That's why it says, In the day of affliction, the Gentiles will come into you from the ends of the earth and say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies. And that's already starting to happen. People are now waking up, regardless of, of ethnicity, regardless of background, whatever. People are waking up now and saying, wait a minute. You're telling me we've been lied to for these last going on almost 2,000 years? That's what's happening. Y'all, these scriptures don't play. That's why I'm that's why I keep drilling. If you are not, if your pastor is not teaching prophecy and identity, he's failing you. Or she's failing you, or whoever. Now, let me get into this. All right. So let me show y'all the first video tonight. And then we're going to talk about this because I got a few. I got a few. Let's move this over here. And I dare not say the words I say that end up making these long videos. So I ain't going to say nothing. We just going to go with it. All right. I ain't going to say nothing tonight, family. We just going with it. Okay. Let's hit play, Matt. And unusual things start to happen as the normal rhythms of earth are disrupted when you're seeing this eclipse you ought to observe this as the day appears to turn to dusk and then dark people have heard birds stop singing now y'all i want to say this real quick family first of all if you're new coming in hit that uh hit that like button for me uh, please, it helps out the channel. Now, let me say this. Um, as a credit to these different content creators that that do this painstake, do the painstaking work of curating these video, these videos and building a narrative around them to share with you all on TikTok, y'all, please check out these. Please write down these if you care to. Uh, but I do want to give credit to these content creators. So if you guys find this content interesting, Write down the name of these content creators on TikTok. And even when I share a YouTube video, I don't have any YouTube videos I want to share tonight. These are all coming from TikTok. And then I'm going to speak on them. But write these videos, uh, write these content pro uh, providers' names down or their ads down for TikTok. And y'all go over and check them out, okay? If nothing else, pull up the video and give them a like, okay? Because they, they go through the painstaking work of making these available to us, which should be coming from the mainstream media. But we know who the mainstream media works for. So they ain't going to give us the... They ain't gonna give us the the, the real. You got to get them from your peers. So do the do the right thing, family, and help your peers out by at least pulling the video up and giving it a like. Okay, let me go back to this. I'm gonna skip back just a little bit. Thank you. This as the day appears to turn to dusk and then dark, people have heard birds stop singing. They've seen giraffes suddenly begin to gallop. Roosters start crowing and crickets chirp. So watch for these unusual behaviors. And we encourage you to help NASA observe the sights and sounds around you. 
Eclipses have a special power. They move people to feel a kind of reverence for the beauty of our universe. Their power is not only to unify us on Earth, but to further science and discovery. Now, that <laughs> he didn't really go. I saw another video earlier. I'm going to turn this one off and bring up another one where his sister captured a little bit of his uh, narrative and built something around it because he said something that, uh oh, sorry about that. He said something in that video that I watched earlier. That to me was not a Freudian, to me was a Freudian slip. He didn't say eclipse. He said ellipse. I heard that. I'm like, these people are are intelligent. They're scientists. They're not stupid. Um, why would he say ellipse when he should have said eclipse? Because they're two very different things. She picked up on it too. And y'all, she, she, she spun this whole narrative off of it. I'm going to bring it up. Teal Jade said, indigenous elders recommend not watching the eclipse, but staying inside and remaining in a quiet state. I learned my lesson from 2017. I will follow the advice for sure. Yo, I hear you on that, Teal Jade. I'm going to tell you what. I was outside during the 2017 eclipse, and it was a magical experience. So uh, it, 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 it helped me. So y'all do what you will. I always say go inside. Go inside. Don't listen to outside. Go inside. What does the inside of you say? That's what's going to be right for you. Anything, anything I tell y'all to do on this channel, and I don't tell y'all to do much. All I do is present the information. The only thing I consistently tell you guys in this channel is to keep your vibrations high. That's all I consistently, and I don't command it. I don't, I'm just telling you why it's beneficial. When you are high vibrational, you attract high vibrational. When you are low vibrational, you attract low vibrational. If you're in the energy of fear, you're going to continue to attract things that keep you afraid. When you're in the energy of courage, which, which you shouldn't be sitting in. That's a temporary phase. Actually, if you're in the energy of joy and love, you're going to continue to attract things that bring you joy and love. I got no problem. I'm going to be out there during that eclipse barefoot. Okay. And I'll be looking at it just like I did in 2017. So y'all do what works for you. Till Jade, I appreciate the, the spirit perhaps in which you presented that. You said the indigenous elders recommend not watching it. I got another set of elders that recommend watching it. So who do you listen to? That's why you have to go inside. That's why you have to go inside. All right. Let me give y'all this uh this this uh breakdown from this sister. But before I do this, let me show y'all something here. Let me show you something that's probably gonna ring for you. All right. Where is it? Thank y'all for being here tonight, by the way. I appreciate y'all being here. This is uh it is always a pleasure to be able to spend part of my time with you guys because you guys are so amazing. You are so amazing and you keep these lives lit, okay? Y'all keep these lives lit, no pun intended, okay? Um, where are we? Let's go right here. No, this is it. All right. Let me, let me make this a little bit bigger so y'all see this. Okay. Nasha is the same energy of Nasa. Okay. Nasa, Nasa, Nasha. This, this letter, this character right here in Hebrew is a sha, sha. But modern Hebrew, the modern European Hebrew, let me call it what it is. Let me call it what it is because it's an adaptation. I ain't gonna get into that. I ain't gonna get into that. I did a whole video breaking that down. Anybody that wants to see it, just drop it in the comments. I'll put a link to it. Okay. Modern Hebrew uses that letter right there as they, they make the sound with an S and with an H. Okay. But anybody who studied the ancient Hebrew character set knows that there are 22 uniquely sounding characters. There was no double sound from. You know, there was a particular character for the sa, s sound, and there was a particular one for the sh. So this is a sh, but modern Hebrew also couples that as an s sound. So it's an sh and an s, depending on depending on the the usage. But we're gonna go with this nasha. What does that mean? It means to beget, to beguile, and to deceive. So now they got whole fact checkers out there now saying, well, NASA doesn't mean deceive. That's a lie. This is the Hebrew, the Strong's Concordance, okay? This has been around a lot longer than the fact checkers, all right? It says that NASA means to deceive. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that dude, to me, looked like he, he looked like cap all over his face and mouth. He sounded like he was lying. All right, let me get this off of here. Let me bring it up. And if it sounds like I'm coming at him, I probably am. I don't, I don't. Y'all don't understand, man. Y'all don't understand. I don't like other people making decisions for me, and I got no power to 
even if I don't want it, I got to take it. So if I don't want you, that's my sun too. That's my moon too. That's my upper iron sphere too. I don't want you shooting stuff in the upper iron sphere. Why are you doing it? How's that going to affect me? I like it the way it is. All right? Now, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. All right. Next one. Ah, you know what, Teal Jade? I'm sorry that happened, man. I'm sorry that happened. Uh, yeah, things happen, man. I look, I, I I don't take light of that. Um, that's one experience. Yours is the first I've had heard where somebody went through something uh that was perhaps ne- can be can be considered negative from going out. You said, but I learned peace regardless of what was happening. That was the blessing. There you go. There you go. You had a positive takeaway from it. That's how you do that. I appreciate you adding that last part there. I really do. Positive takeaway. All right, so let's go with the next one. Let's move this over here and we share. I told you every fucking day is something about this eclipse that's supposed to happen on April. Language, y'all. If you if, listen, if you got a problem with that, then you, I don't know. Look, I, I ain't got no problem with it. I've been known to use some of these words myself. So it is what it is. All right. If you got a problem with the language, I might want to change channels here. Sorry. It is what it is. They get to take the information, all right? And on that note, it's a, it's a lot of us that, you know, we we frown on people using certain language, but we'll watch a comedian dropping a, a four-letter word, every other word, and every other sentence, and it's cool. But if somebody's using it outside of the context of com- comedy, then it's a problem. Y'all, we got to be even, y'all. Let's be even. Here we go. And look what just happened. NASA has slipped up and told I told you every fucking day is something about this eclipse that's supposed to happen on April 8th. And look what just happened. NASA has slipped up and told us exactly what they have planned. There was this press conference where NASA was talking about what they have planned for the April 8th eclipse. And he slipped up and said the word ellipse. A lot of people were just saying, oh, that is just a slip of the tongue. It was not a slip of the tongue. And if you know what an ellipse is, I'm, I'm about to explain it to you and why it's fucking crazy that they're doing this on April 8th. Not only NASA, but CERN too. And if you have CERN doing this particular experiment that they are launching on April 8th with the Particle Hadron Collider, and then you have NASA saying that they're going to be shooting three rockets at the sun at an exact moment in time to try to hit the ionosphere, baby, we are in for some shit. Before, NASA was trying to say that this was just them trying to detect what happens in the ionosphere during an eclipse and see how it affects radiation, how it affects cellular network, and all that other shit. So that's what they were pushing, right? Yeah, he just blew the whole fucking cover by saying ellipse because now we know what they're really doing on April 8th. Before I get into it, let me just say that I am a conspiracy theorist. These are my own ideas, beliefs, and conspiracies. Do not take what I say as fact. Discretion advised. Before I explain to you what an ellipse is, I'm going to play you the clip of the NASA specialist doing a press conference and where he actually says that it is an ellipse. Then moments like this, a total solar ellipse. It's a moment when millions of people are... Now, y'all pay attention to what's going on right over here, okay? That's a teleprompter. So he's reading it. That means somebody wrote ellipse, okay? Now, some, some of y'all out there are going to say, oh, well, you know, um, whoever wrote the copy for that teleprompter, they 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 had a misspelling. Really? I mean, these people have editors. I'm look, I'm I'm in the writing business. I've been in the writing business since 1998. Okay. I'm a I'm a, a lifetime writer, okay. But I've been in the writing industry since 1998, off and on. Okay. These people have editors. Did an editor miss that? It's on the teleprompter. Okay. Let's get back on it. So he read that, meaning it was intended to be written and spoken the way it was. Let's get back to it. He actually says that it is an ellipse. Then moments like this, a total solar ellipse. It's a moment when millions of people across North America will look to the heavens as the moon passes in front and between the sun of the, and the earth. And it's a rare sight that we haven't seen in seven years. And unusual things start to happen. 
So y'all clearly heard him enunciate total solar ellipse and then go forward to try to backtrack and cover himself up and say that when the moon passes the sun and then goes back into talking about very unusual and strange things that will happen. Why, why would that be strange that it's just an eclipse? Wrong. It's an ellipse. Now I'm going to give you a depiction of what an ellipse is and then I'm going to put it together for you. This is the most accurate depiction that I can find that was easily um, relatable that you guys can understand. It comes from this TikToker up there. So basically there are two points, right? And these two points, no matter what, they all come back to this point. And as you can see, they are creating these wave like things. And I'm going to tell you what these two points are going to represent because no matter where these two points are, one still goes to the other as far as wavelengths, frequency, and energy. And when those two things happen, stuff is created from that energy. Remember how I told you CERN was doing something on April 8th? One dot is CERN and the other dot is NASA. And together they are going to fucking create something that I don't even want to talk about. You have NASA who is shooting three rockets at the solar eclipse at the exact time that the sun is passing the moon. Uh, they are trying to do an ellipse. And then you have the hard drone collider that will be powering up and playing with fucking dark matter and ghosts at the same time where the sun is passing over the moon. Again, these are happening in different points at the same time. You couple that with the fact that thousands of people are going to be looking up at what is going on. They are going to be hitting the ionosphere while CERN is down here fucking with the other whatever is down here the atmosphere, the frequencies, the pressures, because CERN experiments with dark matter, dark particles, they open black fucking holes. And if you don't believe me about those three rockets here, the purpose of these space missions is to dwell into the study of the atmospheric disturbance triggered by the solar eclipse and gain an insight on its possible impact on satellite signals and radio frequencies. They launch the rockets will carry specific equipment into the ionosphere to accomplish this objective. The study will focus on atmospheric disturbance triggered by the eclipse. While they're shooting those three rockets at the sun, into the at past the sun into the atmosphere you have CERN who was turning on their particle hard drone collider for the first time in multiple years and if you the atmosphere the frequencies the pressures because CERN experiments with dark matter dark particles they open black fucking holes and if you don't believe me about those three rockets here the purpose of these space missions is to dwell into the study of the atmospheric disturbance triggered by the solar eclipse and gain Atmospheric di disturbance triggered by the solar eclipse or atmospheric disturbance triggered by y'all disturbing it with them free rockets. Next. Insight on its possible impact on satellite signals and radio frequencies. They launched the rockets will carry specific equipment into the ionosphere to accomplish this objective. The study will focus on atmospheric disturbance triggered by the eclipse. While they're shooting those three rockets at the sun, into the at past the sun into the atmosphere you have CERN who was turning on their particle hard drone collider for the first time in multiple years and if you are unfamiliar with that particle hard drone collider and CERN they be fucking with some shit down there and it literally draws so much power to this hard drone collider that they can't power small towns near it because it's sucking up all the energy the solar eclipse produces energy and solar flares on its own that are happening behind all of that you take that and you have two points in time where you are basically fucking with what's up above and fucking with what's below and you're telling me that ain't nothing crazy gonna happen i would be surprised if the scene from ghostbusters didn't open up and shit started flying right out of the air and coming down and fucking killing us i'm not trying to scare anybody but i'm just telling you i've been studying this eclipse since the first fuck it being biblical even though it is biblical we need to pay attention to what they're trying to open up they're opening up portals and gateways and harnessing energy from the solar eclipse to do it and if you don't believe me look up uh, look at the last time they powered on this machine fuck it just look at 2008 when we literally went into a mandela effect and everything fucking changed pay attention and i don't care what nobody says you have people saying oh nothing's gonna happen nothing that you see because you're in a different fucking dimension and frequency where you don't see shit anyway so the people who are of a higher frequency frequency and dimension we're gonna see it we're gonna feel it it's gonna be all around you it's just gonna get really scary and demonic but again i'm just a conspiracy theorist these are my own ideas beliefs don't take any of it as fact discretion advised what y'all think family what y'all think now y'all know i'm laughing y'all know i'm laughing let me read some comments uh let's see uh till j said one more thing 2017 seven cities called salem yeah till j we covered that in a couple of other videos yeah definitely 2017 was was salem 2024 nineveh yeah we and then one one um 
one time what is it jonah texas yeah yeah so uh i showed a video a couple couple uh what was that video i showed i can i don't uh did i uh, already emptied the trash never mind it was in there but i threw it out i'm not gonna pull that one back up emf caused by the smashing okay deal okay teal now now okay teal i'm with you now i'm with you because that's where i was going with this deal that's where i was going okay i read a book Actually, I didn't finish it, but some years ago, I read this book called, I want to say it was called One Second After, and it was some ex-military guy writing a story on how life can change in a second, in a moment, due to a high atmospheric release of high magnitude of uh, electron electromagnetic pulse, okay? Um, so you're saying EMF, but this whole, an EMP blast up there could could knock out power across an entire grid okay and that that they're planning some stuff but i'm gonna show y'all something right here let me stop let me stop the pre presses let me stop the madness let me tell you where nasa has already effed up okay let me show you where they already effed up y'all hold this for me y'all hold this for me over there nasa because see what y'all need to understand is that uh we are seeing in linear time because of the realm we're in okay the heavenly realm the ether the realm of the divine there is no linear time they don't see in time. They only see in possibilities. And then there's this other thing called divine timing. What is divine timing? Divine timing is when God says so. And if you're a non-believer, this, this, this ain't your channel. You can go ahead and exit. We're not debating the existence of the creator. I don't debate uh, 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 intelligent design versus evolution. I don't do that over here. If, if you went to evolution, find your evolution channel. We're not arguing that over here. We, we know what we believe over here. We know what we know. Not believe we know what we know over here, but let me let me uh so so getting back to that the reason why it don't phase me is because we are here in linear time. NASA is planning to do this next week. Guess what? In the realm of the divine, next week already happened because there all there are are possibilities on the board. Possibilities on the board. It's like a mag magnificent galactic eternal chessboard possibilities infinite possibilities so what they're planning to do next week is already seen that's the foolishness in it now watch this i'm i'm, I'm gonna smack them upside the head with this right here y'all watch this y'all watch this this is why this is why what they this is why what they're planning has already failed this is why you gotta know y'all you gotta know what am i pointing at i'm pointing at that third eye chakra okay i'm pointing at that chakra number six you have to know you have to know. You have to know your heart. You have to know right here. That solar plexus. You have to know. When you know, it don't matter what you, what somebody's showing you or what you hear. You know. It's that inner knowing, sight unseen. I talk about that on this channel all the time. What is faith? Faith is an inner knowing, sight unseen. I don't need to see it. I don't need you to tell me it. I already know the outcome. Boom. Watch this. Y'all hold this for me. Y'all hold this for me, NASA. And you too, Bill Gates. You hold this too, Bill. Little Willie. Boom, right here. What that read? What that read, y'all? What that read? Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. And he that rolleth the stone, it will return upon him. So they bring a calamity on their own heads. All right? They bring a calamity on their whole own heads. This is why I tell y'all, what you're looking at on the screen right there is universal law. It always happens. It always happens. If you dig in a pit for the righteous, you're going to fall in it. You're actually digging your own pit. So y'all don't need to get upset about what NASA and what CERN are doing next week. They're going to fall in it. Y'all ever seen these movies where these quote unquote demons that are locked up in these other realms that need quote unquote man to unlock them? What happens to the people that unlock them once, they, once they're free? They say, thank you. Ow! Spit the hair out. These people don't even know what they're doing. Now you know what they're doing, but let me get this off the screen, all right? All right? Let me get that off the screen. So, she said, yes, one second after, was on YouTube as an audio book. It's a good re-listen. Ah, you know what? I might go back and listen. Thank you. This is why I love these lives, y'all, because y'all always put me on, y'all put me on game. Somebody, I don't know if it's somebody watching this live right now or somebody that was in another one of my videos, put me on to this Netflix series called Warrior None. Let me put that in the comments. Because y'all check that out. That's exactly what they were doing in Warrior Nun. They had a CERN-like machine that they were trying to use to jailbreak 
these demonic entities from other realms okay but don't don't think for one minute that their moves have not already been seen and recorded that's where they fail because they're thinking in linear time that's why you can tell they're unrighteous all right y'all excuse me all right so here we go here we go so y'all tell me your thoughts on that video um let me let me show you now this is not the first time they're firing three rockets talking about they're trying to help study the effects of why now why aren't you doing it in 2017? Why didn't why didn't one of these other space agencies in another country? Because there's an eclipse every year. We're just seeing them here in the United States this year. And we the last time we saw that one, we, we had another one in last year, 2023. And then we got this one coming in. Uh, we, we had one in 2017. We had this last one in 2023. We got this one coming in 2024. Why now? Why didn't you do it in 2023? There's a reason. There's a reason that they're perhaps not telling us. Let's look at let's look at something here. Let's bring something else up on the screen here because this came to me while I was looking at. She said, "I think the rockets are called serpent deity. They actually are. Thank you for adding that. They are called serpent deity. That's the rocket, serpent deity. Now, y'all, let me y'all ever seen the 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 logo for uh, for NASA? Let me do something real quick. I'm gonna get off of that. Uh, hang on one sec." All right, let's bring this up. Why do I keep it that button? Right here. That's the NASA logo, y'all. That's the NASA logo. Let me show you what that looks like. You see that? Look at that. Right there. No, I don't want that. I don't, don't download it. I don't want it. Ad already did. Never mind. Let me find another one because I do not want that download. Look at that. See that? Boom. Right there. If I could rotate it, I would. NASA logo. Same thing. Snake tongue. Serpent deity. Serpent deity. Y'all see that? What that look like right there? That's the Va that's the Vatican conference hall right there. What does that look like? Two eyes, two fangs. I brought this up in another video. I brought this up in another video, okay? Outside, outside look. What does it look like? Shaped like a, a diamond head of a snake, okay? Let, now let's let's uh let's look at let me find that image of uh what the Pope sits in front of when he's out there. So y'all can see what y'all dealing with right here. Oh, look at that. Here's your Pope. Here's your Pope with his council, little guard man right there with his lance and whatnot. I ain't tripping. He probably good with it. <laughs> All right. What's that behind the Pope, y'all? Oh, that looks very serpentile, doesn't it? He's supposed to be the biggest religious leader of the world, the biggest leader of Christianity, okay? Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, Christianity. What are all these demonic-looking skulls, thingy, jammy thingies here? What's going on here, y'all? This is the Vatican Conference Hall. How about that? How about that? Is there a connection? Y'all tell me in the comments. Y'all tell me in the comments. In the meantime, we're going to go over here. I'm going to read this for y'all. This is this was written actually about a year ago, about a year ago. I, I like your tango. I get a lot of I, I, sometimes if I want to read how certain uh, signs or whatever, somebody will send me an article that says, hey, this these are the these are the uh, rising signs that are going to be impacted by whatever transit lunar or solar transit or whatever. I like to read these articles. So they're, they're very interesting. A lot of them are extremely accurate. But they did this article that I just found today. I didn't see this when it was originally published. Let's read this as the U.S. shoots down UFOs. People are talking about the fake alien invasion predicted to begin in 2024. OK, now remember, they're shooting something up at the upper ionosphere. They're shooting something up there that everybody. Hey, everybody. What did the guy say from NASA? Everybody should see what's happening. OK, all right. Let's have a look. 
In just the past month, the United States has shot down not one, not two, not three, but four unidentified flying objects in North American airspace. The government is hesitant to give specific answers and appears to be offering only limited information about the objects to the public, leaving many of us leaving many of us understandably wondering what those objects are, what they were doing, what those objects are and what they were doing hanging around. They, this uh, article needs a little editing, by the way. Anyway, uh, this was written by Deanna Roan. I wanted to give credit to the author, okay? The, these recent unknown aircraft appearing in the sky have given way not only to new conspiracy theories, but to resurfaced discussions of old ones. In particular, many are speculating that a theory known as Project Bluebeam may be real. What is Project Bluebeam? Like many other theories about the presence of extraterrestrial life, talk of Project Bluebeam began decades ago. Project Bluebeam by NASA, 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 Deceiver Beguiler, is reported to be a conspiracy theory introduced by Canadian investigative journalist Sergei Monast in the mid-1990s. Wow, that far back. The theory claims that members of the Pentagon, NASA, and the United Nations were collaborating on a plan to simulate a fake alien invasion and staged second coming using hologram projections. Now, y'all know I've heard recently that um, they're planning to sacrifice those three red heifers in Israel uh, this month. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing they're going to they're going to sacrifice them to do this temple dedication or whatever this month. So it's a lot happening in the world. Because the timelines have sped up because the powers that were see what's happening. They see what's happening. And now they're trying to get ahead of it. Remember, y'all, a lot of this stuff was supposed to be spaced out and stretched out to 2030. It's 2024. And they trying to just get it. They trying to get it in because they know they trying to stay ahead of the most high. And you can't because <laughs> all of the moves are seen because they've already happened. This is so funny, y'all. In doing so, he asserted they would eliminate all traditional religions, including Christianity, to make way for a one world religion or, quote, the true religion, end quote, as well as to abolish national pride, national identities and family as it is known today, paving an easier path to bring about a new world order. According to the theory, there are four distinct steps to Project Bluebeam's execution. Number one, the breakdown of all archaeological knowledge via earthquakes. Why do you want to break down archaeological knowledge, okay? The first thing said to happen would be numerous earthquakes in a variety of places that will re reveal unusual items. These items will be used by the UN to support their coming lie to control people, including to make people believe they have previously misunderstood religious doctrine. I wonder if she got to keep her job after publishing this article, y'all. Because you know how some, some of these companies are funny. Anyway, this is meant to weaken humanity's faith in their current religions so they can be more easily preyed upon. Number two, a mammoth style light show and holograms simulating the quote, uh, the second coming of Christ. The next step is the execution of Project Bluebeam is a the next step in the execution of Project Bluebeam is a worldwide light show during which NASA will use numerous satellites to project lasers, holograms, lights and many other technologies to project images of God, Jesus Christ and the prophets into the sky. I wonder if this is why. See, y'all, this is chestnut checkers. It makes me wonder now about the timing of Vlad Putin releasing the quote unquote black icons. OK, the timing of it. I, I talked about that a little bit in my last live, but now reading this article makes me wonder. This is chestnut checkers. Keep going, Matt. One popular opinion of what will be depicted is images of all religious leaders being merged together to create a one true God. Wow telepathic thought control by the Antichrist. The next step will be to use the ELF extra low frequency, VLF very low frequency, and LF low frequency waves to brainwash people into believing God is speaking to them directly. Now, y'all pay attention for a minute because NASA is firing three rockets, right? Three rockets. They didn't really tell you what was on those rockets. They didn't tell you what the payload was of those rockets. Typically, when there's a rocket launch, they'll tell you what the payload is. All they said is, well, we got equipment that wants to study the effects of um, eclipses. Now, they understand, one, that eclipses are portals. Eclipses are portals. Well, why are they portals, Matt? What do you mean they're portals? Because new energies are ushered into the Earth when there's a solar eclipse. New energy. There's new energies ushered in when there's a lunar eclipse. 
but actually those lunar eclipse energies are huge releases because we're talking to full moon a little bit of astrology 101 here full moons are releases new moons are new energy and eclipse is always a new moon eclipse it, the, a, a solar eclipse is always with the new moon it's in conjunction with the new moon so it is a portal of bringing in lunar eclipses are a portal for releases okay that's how that happens now they said that they're going to be launching three rockets right here you have the next step will be to use extra low frequency rocket one perhaps very low frequency rocket two perhaps and low frequency rocket three perhaps waves to brainwash people into believing god is speaking to them directly y'all got to be able to see through all of this okay because the truth is they're trying to get ahead of the narrative and th they understand what's happening with these eclipses okay they, they understand that this is the big one this is why they're doing this right now the reason they're doing it right now is because this is the one that's supposed to reactivate everyone's dna allegedly right we all we we are known to have 12 strands of dna 10 of them are dormant okay too active now i i have my own theory and understanding on what it looks like when all 12 of those strands are active and what that kind of looks like to me is jacob wrestling an angel superpowers superpowers okay that's what that looks like to me but who am i i'm just a regular guy on youtube giving his opinion right so if we can somehow disrupt this solar activity and perhaps disrupt that that's a that's a whole nother side right there that's another possibility maybe be, let me keep going let me keep reading y'all let me keep reading three thing three things here that they'll be using and then three rockets okay these are alleged allegations y'all take take what fits throw the rest out messages will pour into their minds about how they have been doing wrong and insisting it is now time to make things right by following the new religion watch warrior none watch that show warrior none i had somebody re recommend that to me two years ago i watched that show i was like wow in warrior none spoiler alert there was a new religion that entered into the world when this fallen angel got released from his prison by this haldron collider that they had in the show there's this new religion now and everybody's worshiping this fallen angel y'all keep going keep going number four a simulated alien invasion beginning in the year 2024 or maybe sooner in the year 2024 monast wrote back in the mid 1990s a global event will alter the course of mankind's future the world will stand witness to a massive alien invasion thousands of projected holographic alien warships will blanket the skies sending people into a global panic according to reputable sources the government are going to fake a global invasion for approximately near the year 2024 in order to form a one world government okay monas predicted that in the mid 1990s this lady wrote this article a year ago okay now um I wonder if I should open this twit picture if it is there. Let me see. Hang on. Is it there? Nope. Yeah, I figured they closed that. All right. So anyway, I'll keep going. They probably scrubbed that before Elon bought it. This will be achieved by a secret technology people are referring to as an electronic universal supernatural manifestation. An EUSM device specifically designed by NASA to deceive people. Very much like the Heaven's Gate cult that believed a rapture would happen by aliens coming to rescue them. The New World Order will use this technology to brainwash people into thinking the alien invasion is hostile in order to keep them in the low vibration of fear and more easily controlled by their new dictators. A satanic force will then reveal itself worldwide as being inescapable with the Antichrist coming forward to rule over all. All this stuff plays together. Now, does Project Bluebeam explain the recent onslaught of UFOs? There is no proof that Monast's assertions about Project Bluebeam are true and fact checkers at point point nor have clearly marked the claims as false now we know that these project these these fact checkers are all bought out they used to be worth something but they're bought out now because people believe fact checkers so that's easy um i stopped looking at them when, once i figured out what happened back like four years ago i don't i stopped looking at fact checkers but you do you if you like fact checkers go with them some some believe that the theory spawned from the philadelphia experiment allegedly carried out by the military u.s military in 1943 during which the U.S. Navy is said to have attempted to develop technology that would make its ships invisible to enemies. Others have noted damaging similarities between Serge Monast's book and Gene Roddenberry's film script, 
for the unreleased Star, uh, film Star Trek The God Thing. Wow. As well as an episode of Star Trek Next Generation titled Devils Do. However, the unidentified objects recently shot down by the U.S. government, as well as another claimed to have been shot down by China, have renewed conversations about whether or not Monast's predictions were accurate. U.S. Air Force General Glenn Van Herc even said he would not rule out alien or extraterrestrial involvement, stating, I'll let the intel community and the counterintelligence community figure that out. I haven't ruled out anything. OK, so. Uh, oh, I got more there. There's more. The Project Bluebeam theory is now spreading like wildfire on social media. TikToker Jessica McElroy posted a video discussing the theory and what it entails, along with some interesting research she found after browsing the web for just a few hours. Project Bluebeam is a conspiracy theory about a supposed project whose purpose is to create an artificial second coming in order to control people using newly developed technology. Always got to control people, right? They can't be free. They have to be controlled. What happened to Serge Monash, y'all? Around 1995, Monast's two children were taken from him and made wards of the state. And in 1996, he was arrested for involvement in networks of prohibited information. After spending the night in jail, Monast died of a heart attack. Lord have mercy. Though many of his followers believe he was instead poisoned with a psychotropic weapon. While none of these assertions have been proven, the past week's few the past few weeks news of, of objects appearing in U.S. airspace has certainly re-peaked interest in the journalist. Oh, let's see. What about more about Deanna Roan is an associate editor for Your Tango who covers pop culture, lifestyle, astrology and relationship topics. She's had bylines in Emerson's College, Emerson College's literary magazine, Generic and MSN. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Lady Dagestad has said we are so powerful. That's why they constantly do everything to suppress us and keep us away from our full potential. I told y'all. When that vaccine, that whack scene that we looked at in 2020 was being developed, Bill sitting there with his now ex-wife was trying to convince the world on why, well, we, we want African-Americans to take the vaccine first because they're they're the most vulnerable. So we want to make sure that they get the vaccine first. Oh, I ain't supposed to say that word on here. Darn it. Anyway, well, we want to make sure African-Americans get it. OK, so you want. You want us to take it first? Oh, okay, Mr. Bill. Here he, he go my arm right here, Mr. Bill. Anyway, I ain't gonna get back. I ain't gonna go back down that path because YouTube don't like that for whatever reason. They don't like that, so I'm not gonna go back down that path. Anyway, um, <laughs> I wonder why. Hmm. I talked about that six 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 thing in another video. And what it really means, y'all, right? Six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. It's the number of man. It is carbon and melanated. It's the number of carbon and melanated beings. But that's a story for another day. I already covered that. I'm not going to cover that again. Let me go to another video here. Let's go to another video. Hmm. I had a scripture I was going to show y'all on that. Powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Interesting. Very, very nice. They will use to tech to deceive. Matt 24 and 29 Immediately after the tribulations of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from the heavens. OK. All right. I like that. TLJ, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Let me um, let me do something here. Let me do something here, y'all, because I want to I want y'all to understand something. This is the not this is not the first time they fired something at the sky. All right. How many of y'all are familiar with the very first uh, Hunger Games movie? Remember when 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 Katniss is getting ticked off because she knows the controllers are on the other side of this dome. So she pulls her arrow and shoots it up at the dome and you see the grid lines appear when it hits it. That could have been suggestive. That could have been suggestive. And actually I saw something. There was an episode of the Simpsons. They showed where there was a, let me find that y'all. There was an episode of the Simpsons that somebody showed on their channel where they were showing the, uh, the, um, uh, Y'all know the, the Simpsons predicts everything, right? Y'all know that. Um, Uh-oh. Let's uncue the jazz. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Oh, where is it, y'all? Where is it? 
Oh, the, oh, did the did the Simpsons predict the Baltimore Bridge collapse? Are you serious? Wow. I'm trying to find that one, y'all, because I don't want to sit here and watch 35 minutes of the Simpsons. But uh there was one there was a scene someone showed of the this is crazy. I got to show y'all this. I got to show y'all this. I wasn't even looking for this. But I got to show y'all this. This is a two-minute video Before here. Before I started using Hang on. Book, we hit $80,000 in revenue. That's a good look for you. That's a good look. I'm happy for you, bro. Honeybook. Y'all check that out. <laughs> here we go. She said, yep, the bridge was on that too. Let's, sh let's show that, Lady Dagger Status. This wasn't, even on, this wasn't even on deck for tonight, but I'm going to show it. The recent collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, triggered by a collision with the Singapore flagship Dali, has sparked a flurry of speculation and conspiracy theories online. Amid fair use, fair use for critical uh, review purposes only. Amidst the chaos, a peculiar narrative has emerged, with some social media users asserting that the iconic animated series, The Simpsons, had foretold the catastrophe in one of its episodes. This claim follows a long-standing fascination with the show's uncanny ability to predict real-life events, ranging from political milestones to corporate acquisitions. However, upon closer examination, the alleged connections between The Simpsons and the Baltimore Bridge collapse appear tenuous at best. One claim draws from a recent episode set in Scotland, making an illogical leap to associate it with the Baltimore incident. Another reference to a 1996 episode involves a fictional scenario with Hank Scorpio destroying a bridge, which, while featuring a bridge demolition, bears no direct relevance to the actual event in Baltimore. Further muddying the waters is an edited video. Wait a minute, y'all. Did he say Hank Scorpio? Scorpio is the ruler of the eighth house. This is an eight year. That's Scorpio energy. Who knew? See, y'all, they, they don't, nothing is by accident. Nothing's coincidence in Hollywood. Nothing. Everything is planned featuring the show's news anchor, Kent Brockman, reporting on the bridge collapse. This video, identified as a fabrication likely produced through editing or AI technology, has no basis in the show's original content, underscoring the creative lengths to which some have gone to forge connections between fiction and reality. The actual collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge has been attributed to the structural failure caused by the ship's collision with a pier. Experts have explained the mechanics behind the collapse, emphasizing the excessive force of the impact and its incompatibility with the bridge's design parameters. Well, that's the official story. We've kind of covered that in the last few videos, but I just thought that was interesting because I'd never seen that on there before. So let me let me get back off of here. Let me get back off of here. Everything is information warfare, by the, by the way, right now, y'all. Everything's information warfare. Somebody comes up with something that goes against the mainstream narrative, it's debunked 24 to 48 hours later. That's information warfare, okay? Um, she said it's like the Simpson is written by the ideas of the real powers that were it's crazy how the show has been so true on so much You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Let me let me show y'all something here that I that I pulled up because I want y'all to see this right here This is not the first time that I'm gonna read some scripture I told y'all this is scripture edition as much as possible on Maddie's rap I'm gonna show y'all that this is not the first time that mankind in his foolishness tried to shoot something into the heavens All right, it happened before in ancient Babylon, and America happens to also be known as the daughter of Babylon. So there's nothing new under the sun. We know that from reading the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, okay. Um, all right, so here we go. Ecclesiastes questions and get answers, okay? I know that was corny. Y'all don't dig me on it. That was very corny. Here we go. The book of Jasher. One of those books that uh, was not included in the 66 book canon that was originally an 80 book canon, but that's a story for another day. And Haron, the son of Tira, a, this this is uh, from a website called sacred-text.com. So for those of you who have never seen the book of Jasher, you can read it here. I, I happen to have a printed copy of it and a book of Jubilees as well and a bunch of other apocryphal books. That um, But any of those you're looking for, go to sacred-text.com and you can read them. Okay, here we go. And Haran, the son of Terah, Abraham's oldest brother, took a wife in those days. Haran was 39 years old when he took her, and the wife of Haran conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Lot. And she conceived, this is chapter 9, by the way, chapter 9 of the book of Jasher. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and she called her name Milka. And again, conceived and bare a daughter, and she called her name Sarai. Haran was 42 years old when he begot Sarai, which is in the 10th year of the life of Abram, 
And in those days, Abram and his mother and nurse went out from the cave as the king and his subjects had forgotten the affair of Abram. I think I can skip past this and get to, uh, let me skip down, y'all. Let me skip down. Let's see. Uh, let's skip down to verse eight. And Terah had 12 gods of large size made of wood and stone after the 12 months of the year. And he served each one monthly and every month Terah would bring his meat offering and drink offering to his gods. Thus did Terah all the days. Now, this is going to be a point of contention for some people because there are many that contend that the original scriptures uh, um, annotated 13 months. OK, we know that there's a there's a huge uh, debate in the world by, you know, about around the idea of how many months are there really. I'm not going to get into that in this channel because at the end of the day, I don't think it makes that much of a difference with regards to the energies presented. OK, 12, whether you, whether you put it in 12 months or 13, the energies that I've noticed are the same. So I don't I don't get into those debates because to me, I think they end up not being very fruitful. That's just me. But let me keep going. And uh, let's see, 12 gods of a large size made of. Uh, OK, I got that for each month. OK, and every month, Tara would bring his meat offering and drink offerings to his gods. Thus did Tara all the days. Verse nine. And that generation were wicked in the sight of the Lord. And they thus made every man his God. But they forsook the Lord who had created them. And there was not a man found in those days in the whole earth who knew the Lord, for they served each man his own God, except Noah and his household. And all those who were under his counsel knew the Lord in those days. And Abram, the son of Terah, was waxing great in those days in the house of Noah, and no man knew it. And the Lord was with him. And the Lord gave Abram an understanding heart, and he knew all the works of that generation were vain, and that all their gods were vain and were of no avail. And Abram saw the sun shining upon the earth, and Abram said unto himself, Surely now this sun that shines upon the earth is God, and him will I serve. Okay? All right? Some people can read into that. I'm not going to do that right now. Okay? But let, again, it says here, And Abram said unto himself, Abram saw the sun shining upon the earth, and Abram said unto himself, Surely now this sun that shines upon the earth is God, and him will I serve. Let's keep going. Verse 14. And Abram served the sun in that day, and he prayed to him. And when evening came, the sun set as usual. And Abram said within himself, surely this cannot be God. OK, so he went he went back on what he was believing before. And Abram still continued to speak within himself. Who is he who made the heavens and the earth, who created upon the earth? Where is he? And night darkened over him. And he lifted up his eyes toward the west, north, south and east. And he saw that the sun had vanished from the earth and the day became dark. And Abram saw the stars and moon before him, and he said, Surely this is God who created the whole earth as well as man, and behold, these his servants are gods around him. And Abram served the moon and prayed to it all that night. And in the morning when it was light and the sun shone upon the earth as usual, Abram saw all the things that the Lord God had made upon the earth. And Abram said unto himself, Surely these are not gods that made the earth and all mankind, but these are the servants of God. And Abram remained in the house of Noah, and there knew the Lord and his ways. And he served the Lord all the days of his life. And all that generation forgot the Lord and served other gods of wood and stone and rebelled all their days. And King Nimrod reigned securely and all the earth was under his control and all the earth was of one tongue and words of union. At once upon a time, man all spoke the same language. OK, verse 21. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together. Foot, Mitzrayim, Cush, Canaan with their families. And they said to each other, come, let us build ourselves a city and in it a strong tower and its top reaching heaven. And we will make ourselves famed so that we may reign upon the whole world in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us, that we may reign mightily over them and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars. And they all went before the king and they told the king these words and the king agreed with them in this affair. And he did so. And all the families assembled, consisting of about 600,000 men, and they went to seek an extensive piece of ground to build the city and the tower. And they sought in the whole earth, and they found none like one valley at the east of the land of Shinar, about two days walk. And they journeyed there and dwelt there. And they began to make bricks and burn fires to build the city and the tower that they had imagined to complete. And the building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin. And they began to build it. And whilst they were building against the Lord God of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him and to ascend 
into heaven. Pay attention, y'all. And all these people and all the families divided themselves in three parts. There's that number again. The first said, we will ascend into heaven and fight against him. The second said, we will ascend to heaven and place our own gods there and serve them. And the third part said, we will ascend to heaven and smite him with bows and spears. And God knew all their works and all their evil thoughts. And he saw the city and the tower which they were building. Three rockets. Three rockets. Okay. Three different families or the three or families all the families divided themselves into three parts three rockets three parts all with the purpose of making war with the god of heaven okay keep going let's keep going verse 27 um let's see and when they were building they built themselves a great city and a very high and strong tower and on account of its height the mortar and bricks did not reach the builders in their ascent to it until those who went up had completed a full year. And after that, they reached to the builders and gave them the mortar and the bricks. Thus was it done daily. And behold, these ascended and others descended the whole day. And if a brick should fall from their hands and get broken, they would all weep over it. And if a man fell and died, none of them would look at him. And the Lord knew their thoughts. What did I just say a minute ago? All of this stuff is seen at the realm of the divine because there's no linear time there. OK, there's only possibilities. It was already seen the future that they're planning has already happened in the let me keep going. Verse 29. And the Lord knew their thoughts and it came to pass when they were building, they cast the arrows toward the heavens and all the arrows fell upon them filled with blood. And when they saw them, they said to each other, surely we have slain all those that are in heaven. So God, God tricked them. What do you say? He's whoso digged the pit shall fall therein. Let's keep going. For this was from the Lord in order to cause them to err and in order to destroy them from off the face of the ground. That's universal law kicking in. Verse 31, and they built the tower and the city and they did this thing daily until many days and years were elapsed. And God said to the 70 angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him saying, come, let us descend and confuse their tongues that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor and they did so unto them so he said let us descend and confuse their tongues let us descend was it the vibrational frequencies that descended or did they take on human form or fleshly form we don't know it doesn't say it here either way all of us are frequency we just some of us are just frequency wrapped in flesh suits okay 33 and from that day following, or all of us is rather, and from that day following, they forgot each man his neighbor's tongue, and they could not understand to speak in one tongue. And when the builder took from the hands of his neighbor lime or stone, which he did not order, the builder would cast it away and throw it upon his neighbor that he would die. So they basically lost their mind and started killing each other. I wonder if that's on deck. Anyway, 34, and they did so many days. And they killed many of them in this manner. So again, whoso diggeth the pit shall fall in it. They call themselves making war with the God of heaven. What did he do? He confused their tongue and they ended up making war with each other. Whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein. That's universal law. Verse number 35. And the Lord smote the three divisions that were there. And he punished them according to their works and designs. Those who said, we will ascend to heaven and serve our gods became like apes and elephants. And those who said, we will smite the heaven with arrows. The Lord killed them. One man through the hand of his neighbor and the third division of those who said, we will ascend to heaven and fight against him. The Lord scattered them throughout the earth. How about that? How about that? How about that? We will ascend to heaven and serve our God. Those who said we will ascend to heaven and serve our gods became like apes and elephants. I wonder if they made apes and elephants to worship like golden apes and golden elephants. And he said, okay, I'm going to turn y'all into these things that y'all said y'all were going to put up here. Whoso dig the pit shall fall therein. You get it back the way you put it out. I say that all the time. You get it back the way you put it out. Oh, you want, oh, you going to put some elephants? You going to put some golden elephants and apes? Your gods here? Why did he turn them into elephants and apes? The only thing I can draw from that is that is exactly the gods that they had fashioned. Because what does it say there? He says, and the Lord smote the three divisions that were there, and he punished them according to their works and their, their designs. 
So they designed these. He said I, he punished them according to their works and their designs must mean they designed and created apes and elephants that were somehow golden or had some other type of metal to worship. And he said, OK, all right, I'm going to turn you into what you said. You're going to y'all keep playing with God. <laughs> y'all keep playing with him. OK. We will ascend to heaven and okay, and I got that part. We will ascend to heaven and fight against them. The Lord scattered them throughout the earth. And those who were left amongst them, when they knew and understood the evil which was coming upon them, their own evil, their own evil, because he turns your own devices on you. Oh, you want to kill me with the arrows? Guess what? Y'all go kill each other now. Universal law. They forsook the building and they also, and those who were left amongst them, when they knew and understood the evil which was coming upon them, they forsook the building and they also became scattered upon the face of the whole earth and they ceased building the city and the tower. Therefore, he called the place Babel for there. The Lord confounded the language of the whole earth. Behold, it was at the east of the land of Shinar. Babylon. I wonder if that somehow is some way closely related to Babel land or the land where they babbled, Babylon, Babylon. I tell y'all, pay attention to vibrations of these words. Pay attention to the vibrations. They have meaning. English has changed a lot of stuff with these vowels. The original Hebrew had 22 consonants. Vowels are implied. They're implied. E each and every person watching this live stream right now or watching this video on demand can remove the vowels from your name and still say your name. Understand that. But when you say your name without the vowels, it, it produces a, a more powerful vibrational frequency. The, the vowels soften and remove the vibration. Consonants are hard. So when you hit those consonants, it's like striking notes. It's like striking musical notes when you hit consonants. When you put emphasis on vowels, it breaks up the power of the consonants. That's a story for somebody. Y'all pay attention. Pay attention. Consonants are b, k, d. G, they have power. Vowels are A, E, I, O. It doesn't have the same power in it as those striking notes and striking chords of those of those uh, consonants. All right. So verse thirty-seven again, and they ceased building the city and the tower. Therefore, he called the place Babel, for there the Lord confounded the language of the whole earth. Behold, it was at the east of the land of Shinar. And as to the tower which the sons of men built, the earth opened his mouth and swallowed up one third part thereof. And a fire also descended from heaven and burned another third. And the other third is left to this day. And it is of that part which was aloft. And its circumference is three days walk. And many of the, men, many of the sons of men died in that tower, a people without number. Now, I just had a revelation, y'all, on this. Because a lot of people who are in the spiritual community, they understand tarot. And a lot of people who are in the quote unquote faith community, aka religion, they see tarot as evil. But there is a major arcana card in the tarot called the tower card. Major arcana cards represent spiritual and supernatural energies. And the minor arcana are earthly physical energies. When you look at that tower card in most any tarot deck, it shows you destruction coming from above of a tower and breaking it down. So anytime anybody sees tarot, here's tarot, here's a tower reading, whatever, when they see the tower card, that typically means divine intervention. That's God stepping in and destroying something that needs to be torn down because it's going to be a bigger problem if it doesn't. Okay? So those of you who, who don't even understand how tarot integrates with scripture, I just gave you another example. I still got one coming for y'all of the uh, Three of Swords card and the Judgment card. I touched on it when I talked about uh, the, uh, what is it, the last cap, last chapter of uh, the book of, is it Samuel? It's either Samuel or Kings. I think it's Kings. I'm not going to go into it tonight. I'm, I'm just curious. Let me go to it really quick because I did a video. The, the title of the video is uh, King David, a seer and something else. Okay. Um, it's in my channel. It's in my channel. Um but I talked about that. A lot of these are based on these scriptures. A lot of these so-called wicked tarot cards are based on scripture. It's right there. 
that's the tower card right there for those of you who I know. And I know I have tower readers that watch my channel and I appreciate y'all being here that now you now you know where the tower the tower card came from it it had to do with the tower of babel being destroyed by the most high it's always divine intervention oh the tower is painful you know what it has to happen it's something that has to happen so the guy can correct something that went awry anyway let me read some uh let me read some uh some uh comments here okay uh laura logan investigative reporter said it was a cyber attack and supply chain interruption interesting we know that supply chain interruption part. Also, I played this uh, Teal Jade. I don't know if he was on my last live, but um, I played uh, a TikTok of some military vets talking about how, and one of them was a military vet. The other one wasn't, but he's like connected to that community. He talked about how that bridge going down trapped some naval vessels within the harbor so that they couldn't get out while Russia is making another strategic move with their Navy, sending ships over to the Persian Gulf. So all of this stuff plays together, y'all. It all plays together, okay? She said, uh, let's see, Obama's leave the world behind, showed a scene with the ship. I talked about that. Lady Dagger status, before I purchased an apocrypha, I listened to it on YouTube. Okay. The ship had a Hebrew symbol for Lamed. Okay. That's the modern Hebrew pronunciation of the La or the staff. Okay. Lamed means to learn or to teach. It, it could also be to lead. Okay. Because it's, because it's the symbol. If you look at pictographic Hebrew, it's the symbol of the staff that a shepherd would carry. Okay. So it could also mean to lead. Um, Symbolically, if the movie was blue and red, it made me think of the blue Kachina, which begins blue and becomes red. Very interesting. Very interesting uh, additions there. Um, let's see. Elsewhere, it says the symbol means language or tongue. The above symbol was a single symbol. Okay. Three days walk. I remember that now from the movie. Three days walk, three days journey. The three shows up hundreds of times in the Bible. Lama three. Yep. 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 And they sent, they're shooting three rockets. Okay. Let. Uh, so I wanted to show y'all that it is not the first time that... <laughs> Man decided to shoot something at the heavens. Okay. We saw it right there. We saw it right there in the book of Jasher. That was book of Jasher chapter nine. For those of you who are wondering. All right. Let me pull up some more video here. Let's see. What do I have next here? Ah, oh, this is happening. This is happening right. Let me delete that. I don't want that. This is also happening during the eclipse and the days after. Now, here they go with this low vibrational title on this thing, but y'all, it is what it is. They're calling this the Devil's Comet. The reason they call it the Devil's Comet is silly because it has two horns. Like, the devil got two horns, okay? I know that that's some of the symbology that they use, but the devil can look at you and smile sometimes and have a suit on and a white collar. Ooh, did I say that? Yeah, I said it. I don't care. The there are these major stellar events strike. coming up this year, not just the total eclipse here in America in just two weeks, but there's another light show you may not have heard about. For the first time in 80 years, a star system located 3,000 light years from Earth will be visible to the human eye. Yeah, it's expected to happen at some point between now and September. It's being called a once-in-a-lifetime event. The researchers here feel that they're within reach of finding new particles that really make the universe tick. One more heave, they say, and they could make one of the biggest breakthroughs of all time. Palab Ghosh, BBC News, CERN. So I've got more fun, guys, for the sky watchers at home. A lot to look forward to in the spring. We're going to see the total solar eclipse. Yep, on yeah, yeah, But there's a comet that's already close enough to Earth. We're going to see it leave a trail in the night sky. Astronomers have been watching the Devil Comet, what they call it, all month because of a series of flare-ups. But a direct flyby is set to happen somewhere between April 21st and 24th. NASA says they think we could even see this comet with the naked eye during next month's eclipse. Uh, the reason it's called a Devil Comet, you guys may have remembered this last year, is because the trail of gas and ice that it left behind during a flare-up last year actually looked like devil horns. It split, yeah. and so it caused these uh, two devil horns. You can kind of see it there. This yes. particular comet only comes into full view once every 71 years. It is a once-in-a-lifetime yeah. event. For those less scientific, we found at least one person who has an uneasy feeling about the rare alignment and how it'll somehow impact his daily life. It kind of disrupts things that are normally taking their course. Oh my gosh, Frederick, I am so looking forward to this. So we're located in New York City, 
by the way. I'm curious, will this be visible when this occurs? Will this be visible across the world or is it only going to be in particular locations on Earth? If it uh, goes off between now and and uh, <clears throat> September, October, it will be visible, <clears throat> excuse me, everywhere. Um, it's the Nova will get up to about second magnitude. Uh, that's about the 50th brightest star in the sky. It's the same as uh, Polaris. If you can see Polaris from New York City, uh, you can see this Nova. Uh, it'll be easy to see if you get out to a, a dark place. Uh, it will be bright for a few days. It will get up to, to as I said, second magnitude and then fade. Uh, in a dark place, you can probably see it for a week or two, uh, especially if you have binoculars. Now, the Large Hadron Collider is the world's biggest atom smasher, but as it turns out, it's not big enough. The European Centre for Particle Research, CERN, is unveiling details of a new particle accelerator today, something three times larger and twice as deep. There are so many outstanding questions in fundamental physics today, and in our knowledge of the universe, its structure and its evolution, for which we have no answer. And so we need more powerful instruments to be able to addressing uh, those questions. Thousands of scientists here are hunting for the tiny particles that are contained in the atoms that make up the world around us. Professor Mitesh Patel has spent his entire professional life searching for them. I think for me this is really about exploration. To be able to look for something genuinely new, if you're going to go and explore the unknown, then of course you don't know what you're going to find and you can't guarantee a particular outcome. I can offer you one additional perspective that um, you know many people may or may not know about. There's also a, uh, a Christian perspective about CERN and Switzerland and CERN mm -hmm. is actually built, if I'm not mistaken, on an ancient town named Apollyon, which just so happens to be a portal where um, a demon will come out of in the last days, which mm -hmm. is which lines up very much <laughs> with what CERN are doing. So, uh, interesting. I thought, uh, what is the name of the the place? What is the name? Apollyon. 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 Yes. Apollyon. Oh. Yes. This enormous underground lab lies hidden away beneath the Swiss French Alps. The plan is to stretch it even further. Nearly every day, I still get that sort of wow as I look at all of it. This experiment has been going on for more than a decade. It's made some important discoveries, such as a particle called the Higgs boson. This is one of the detectors that discovered the Higgs 12 years ago. It was an incredible scientific achievement. But the LHC was built to do much more than that. It was supposed to discover brand new particles that would change the theory of physics. It hasn't. So in that sense, it's failed. And that's why they need a larger machine. The plan is to build what's called the FCC, the Future Circular Collider, what? next to the existing accelerator. It'll be at least twice as deep and measure nearly 91 kilometers. That's around 56 miles. Inside, particles will travel much further than they currently do. They're pulsed by an electric field and stronger magnets, which make the particles collide with much greater force and hopefully revealing far more. But it is more than that because there are lots of physicians, I know some, they're doing very strange experimentation. There are beings from portals coming in and out. It's physicists from the CERN who told me this. They've testified so is, to beings coming in and out of portals. Yes. And, and they were things. saying, I mean, I, I met them at a dinner and, and there were two of them. And uh, both said that, yes, they have, you know, uh, secondhand uh, proof that the people who, who uh, you know, they're, they're dealing with the boson of X and the um, subatomic uh, things. So they have apparently in the bottom of the stern, uh, this, this portal, this door where they are dealing with all the subatomic uh, dimensions. They say there are 17 different dimensions of reality. That's what the, those physicists say. Some others say there are more dimensions. You know, we know the uh, time space, uh, you know, the tri-dimensional uh, X, Y, Z <laughs> in, in, in a graphic. 
But um, then you have more dimensions and uh, they are playing with that. They're using that and they have, were a group and they had a, a being. They did not tell me more who came that doesn't resemble a human. And then they had another one and they have a proof because they left a scarf. <laughs> they left the scarf. And now when you look at what is going on in the Syrian, there is a fight from some of the military um agencies uh, intel they say that there is a, a fight on time they're trying to change time you're going to so much effort digging all these tunnels spending so much money to smash particles together mm -hmm. and so what's the point um scientific exploration i think it's almost like asking you know what's the point of art or music i think humans have this curiosity of finding what's out there and what is how does the world around you work? And FCC will help us answer some of those questions. The countdown is on to a once in a lifetime total eclipse. The total eclipse takes place on April 8th at 3.20 p.m. Our world will plunge into the eerie, mysterious, wonderful darkness that is totality. We are in fact the only planet where that has a moon just the right size to black out the sun. But also a few other planets are going to be visible during this time. A few that we're obviously used to seeing. So once that becomes complete totality, becomes darkness, you're going to have Venus, which again, we see a decent amount of times, Jupiter as well. This is 12P, which is the Pons Brooks Comet. It comes around every 71 years. Now, the reason that you might be able to see this with the naked eye versus just a telescope is because this comet is known for flare-ups. Mm -hmm. It's basically a ball of dirt and ice. So chunks of it routinely break off, mm -hmm. and it causes a much brighter flare as it's traveling across the night sky. It actually, because of the way it's shaped right now, it looks like it has devil horns because of the way chunks have broken off, so it's nicknamed the Millennium Falcon. Ah. And so if we're lucky enough to get clear sky Guys, the eclipse and one of those chunks breaking off, you might get to see that comet as well. With 13 states across the country in the path of totality. According to NASA, the great North American eclipse will stretch from Mexico to Canada and last anywhere from three and a half to four minutes. When the corona comes out and it goes total, it's like this eyeball looking at you from space because the sun, instead of being bright, is dark and it has this white halo around it. And it's like somebody's eye looking down at you. We're gonna be live on TV here on Four ABC. Four minutes on long, so you'll get the, the totality. The whole spiritual oh, yeah. experience. Spiritual experience. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. If you miss it this time around, the next full solar eclipse in the US from coast to coast won't happen until 2045. It's a real visceral experience and the whole anticipation the first stage of the new Collider won't be fully operational until 2045. Ay, 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 canta y no llores, la, 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 <laughs> la. Yo, y'all, what do you think? What do you think? A lot of stuff happening next week. A lot of stuff happening next week. I have my theory on why they're doing what they're doing. Again, you firing rockets, you turning on a, a portal machine, trying to harness the energy of an eclipse. You have a biblical eclipse that is moving across America and completing what is the seven year culmination of the Ah, or for those of y'all that are more familiar with modern Hebrew, Aleph, and beginning with the Aleph in 20 or the first, the first cross from, um, Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, gave you the first slash. Okay. The second one that happened from like Texas, New Mexico, or so came across, made another mark. And then you got this one going all the way across. Y'all have seen it. I'm not going to bring it up on here. Y'all have seen it. It's an Aleph and a Tav for those of y'all that understand modern Hebrew. Now, I like the ancient one, Ah and Ta, or Tha, rather, the beginning and the end right here over this land. Right here over this land. But why are they doing it? Y'all hear me break this, uh, pull this scripture up all the time. Today's going to be no different. I'm going to do it again, okay? Let me bring this up. Okay, I'm going to do it again, y'all. I know y'all tired of seeing it, but I'm going to bring it up again. And then I'm going to show y'all one more video, and we're going to wrap it up. Y'all got any questions? Let me know. 
right here. Let's go the sixth chapter of, I'm sorry, yeah, the sixth chapter of Second Ezra. I'm going I'm to read from the beginning and move all the way down to where I want to stop here. And he said unto me, you got to read from chapter one here, but this is uh, this is in the Apocrypha, the second Ezra chapter six, verse one. And he said unto me, in the beginning, when the earth was made before the borders of the world stood or ever the winds blew. Let me make sure I'm on screen. OK, good. Before it thundered and lightened or ever the fountains of par or foundations of paradise were laid. Foundations of paradise were laid. Foundations of paradise. were. Let's go back. And he said unto me, in the beginning, when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, or ever the winds blew, before it thundered and lightened, or ever the foundations of paradise were laid. I'm gonna stop right there. And I could stop. I could do. A, I could spend a whole whole video off of that. This was originally created to be a paradise that you incarnated and came to to enjoy. Who took control of it and turned it into what we have today? Men working for other men for wages. Taking money to, to buy things that the earth rose for free. Taking money to pay for power in your home when power in the earth is free. Free power. Yes, that exists. Okay. This was originally created to be a paradise. Who took it over and turned it into what it is? Verse two again, before it thundered and lightened or ever the foundations of paradise were laid, before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established, before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together, or ever the heights of the air were lifted up, the firmament, before the measures of the firmament were named, or ever the chimneys in Zion were hot. Some of these you can be can be found in the book of Enoch, okay? Verse five, and ear, or ear means before, and ear the present years were sought out, and or ever the inventions of them that now sin, were turned, sin meaning error, okay? Um, before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure. Before they were sealed that gathered faith for a treasure. Before they were sealed. Some, no, let me keep going. Woo! The seal of God in their forehead. Hmm. You see it outside. Did it say the field, seal of God on their forehead? Or the seal of God in their forehead. That's the scripture in Revelation. I'm, I'm not going to go there. But some of y'all have read it and heard of it. Okay. Um, where was it? Okay. Before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure. Verse 6. Then did I consider these things and they all were made through me alone and through none other. By me also they shall be ended and by none other. I can stop right there and tell you if you are worried about some fools pushing a button and and destroying the earth let me read verse six again then did i consider these things when before they were built and they all were made through me alone and through none other by me also they shall be ended and by none other so he said i built this if anybody gonna destroy it i'ma destroy it that's the most high talking. So y'all can rest y'all nerves if y'all worried about some fools doing something stupid on April uh, April the 8th. It's already been decided. They have already fallen in their own pit. It just hasn't manifested yet. I said it. Verse 7. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? The division between the old earth and the new earth. Some of y'all hear me and hear other people talking about the 3D, 5D split. OK, let's keep going. And then I answered and said, verse seven again, what shall be the parting asunder of the times or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Verse eight. And he said unto me from Abraham and to Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of of it that follows for Esau is the end of the world who's running it now Esau I talked about that in another video I'm not gonna get into that and I ain't talking about what them camp brothers on the street corner with their bullhorns are talking about they 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 go too micro with it and make it about a skin color and that ain't what it's about okay he said you'll know a tree by its fruit not by its bark but that's a story for another day that's the Messiah talking you know a tree by its fruit this is why I tell y'all about high vibrational 
low vibrational mfs they can't get higher than a certain vibration and it's it's low okay they can't get higher that's why he said you are of your father the devil when he was talking to some of them religious leaders of the time this is why i tell y'all all the time the messiah aka jesus christ aka yeshua aka yashia aka yahawashai whatever flavor you want to do okay all has the same energy because of the thought some people think the word the term jesus doesn't have power and yet it had power before we were awakened y'all get off of that get off of that okay whatever name you want to go by this is why he told this is why i said he was not a religious man he was a spiritual man that was hated by the religious community for the things that he taught that were setting people free all right that had nothing to do with religious doctrine let me keep going okay now again for esau is the end of the world verse 9 and jacob is the beginning of it that follows that's why i always say identity and prophecy who's esau who's jacob they're sealed already they're already sealed so guess what if you jacob and you don't know it you ain't got to worry about it you sealed already you you'll know it in a minute <laughs> you'll know it in a minute just keep inhaling and exhaling all right keep sleeping and waking up keep going to your work and coming home you're gonna figure it out in a minute verse 10 for the hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Other question, Ezra's, ask thou not. So the angel said, don't ask me nothing else. You, you, you're doing too much. Don't ask me nothing else. Verse 11. And I answered then and said, O Lord, that bearest rule, if I have found favor in thy sight, I beseech thee, show thy servant the end of thy tokens, whereof thou showest me part of them last night. You got to go back and read this whole book. It's fascinating. All right. And by the way, uh, he got into this realm by eating a certain flower that was in the field. Y'all do what you got to do with that, okay? Y'all do what you got to do with that. Anyway, let me keep going. I ain't telling nobody to go out in the field and look for no flowers, but understand how a lot of these people saw their prophetic visions. Let me keep going. And all of those things came from God, by the way. They weren't created in a factory. Pharmacopoeia. That's, uh, I heard somebody today break that down. They said pharmacopoeia is the greek form of the word sorcery i think it is pharmacopoeia I, I gotta look that up if i remember to do it before the end here i'll do that but if, but if i remember hearing that correctly the greek transliteration of sorcery is pharma pharmacopoeia or something like that what does that sound like pharmaceuticals okay man-made drugas okay huh god's god's medicine is called drugs and man's drugs is called medicine why is that let me keep going okay uh let's see where was he another uh another question ezra is asked thou not and answered then and said oh lord verse 11 oh lord that bearest rule if thou if i have found favor in thy sight i beseech thee show thy servant the end of thy tokens whereof thou showedst me part of them last night verse 13 so he answered and said unto me stand up upon thy feet and hear a mighty sounding voice and it shall be as it were a great motion but the place where thou standest shall not be moved and therefore when i speak when it speaketh be not afraid for the word is of the end and the foundation of the earth is understood and why because the speech of these things trembleth and is moved for it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed and it happened that when i had heard it i stood up upon my feet and hearkened and behold there was a voice that spake and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters and it said behold the days come that i will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth and will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness and when the affliction of zion shall be fulfilled who is zion you got to know you got to know these things you got to know these things who is Zion? When the Zion is whoever's been afflicted for a long time. When the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled, meaning over with. I'm here to tell you the affliction of Zion is looking like it's over with. So what comes next? The visitation and the inquisition. Verse 18 again. And it said, behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth and will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness with their trying to block out the sun with aerosol sprays coming out of the back of airplanes talking about you cooling the earth off when i don't want my sky sprayed 
You spray your spray your spray your half. Don't spray my half. Spray your piece. Don't spray mine. Oh, I ain't got no choice in it. Well, I guess what? There's somebody that does. I got a scripture for that too. I got a scripture for that. And when the world, verse twenty this is the last one I'm going to read. And when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then will I then will I show these tokens? The book shall be opened before the firmament, and they shall see all together. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. So you know what's happening. You know what's happening. You know what's happening. You know what's coming. So now, now you know why they want to jump in early and hijack the story. Because they know what's coming. They know these scriptures too. They know these scriptures. Nasha. To beguile or to deceive. Nasha. Nasa. Nasha. All right. He said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nine to visit them that dwell upon the earth and will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. When the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. Okay. So, y'all just read the whole author's breakdown of what she feels like Project Blue Beam is that was written last year. Hmm, maybe we can put something in that atmosphere that can simulate that visitation. You think he don't see that? Huh? You think he don't see that? You think he don't see that? What did he say in verse 6? Then that I consider these things that they were all made through me alone and through none other. By me also they shall be ended, and by none other. That's the word. That's the word. That's the word. Let's go here. Let me show y'all something. Let me stand here while I'm here. Let's go to Isaiah 55 real quick. That's the word. Let's go to Isaiah 55. B verse 11, right here. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So if he said, by me, these things were made alone, and by me, if they get destroyed, I'm going to do it. The word don't return void. It carries out what he said it was going to carry out. So is Nasha going to destroy the earth? No, they can't. They don't have that authority. They don't. They can try to deceive you and make you think something else. What's up, Allie? I ain't even see you on there. I'll have to catch the replay, of course. Pharmakia, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lady Dagestatish. Thank you. Thank you. So let me show y'all this one more thing here. Where's that? Where's that scripture? Hang on a second. Where is that? Thank y'all for being here tonight. I appreciate it. I know y'all could be doing anything, but y'all are here with me, and I appreciate that. That does I do not take that lightly. Let's see. Um, excuse me, y'all. What is that? Hmm, let's go here because we've seen this before. We know what's coming. We've seen this before. Let me try this one, y'all. You know what? Something's telling me not to. I'm gonna save this for another video. Let me let me let me be obedient to that voice. Something's telling me not to share this one, so I'll save this one for another video. But I will show y'all this this uh this video right here. I will show y'all this. This is the last one because this is what Matt thinks is coming. This is this is this. I, 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 well, I told y'all what is coming. I told y'all what they're gonna try to do. I'm here to tell you they've already failed. It's already been determined in the ether. It's already been determined in the heavens. They've already failed. All they're doing is they have to go through this to piss the most high off so they can get their karma. I told y'all karma is instant here in, in 2024. It's instant. It's not waiting anymore. You're not waiting years for karma to play out anymore. This is it because this is the end of an age. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Jacob Jacob is, is shifting. The shift is here. So karma ain't waiting. So he's waiting he, he's letting them play this out because they stupid because they stupid. He letting them play it out so he can like, OK, yeah, y'all, this this was this was the last straw. Just like them ones that built that tower east of Lalana Shinar. And I had to deal with them. I'm coming again. I'm coming again. All right. Let me show you all something here. This is bonus material right here. This is Astro Bella Luna, one of my favorite YouTube, not, not YouTube, uh, um, Instagram and TikTok personalities. 
she's on point. She knows her stuff. Let me let me put this in here. Uh, where is it? Because I'm going to break this down for y'all. Show y'all what this means. It's Astro Bella Luna. Y'all can check her out on Instagram and TikTok. We have just entered the most pivotal month of the year, okay? April is not here to play around. And if we can get through this month, we can get through anything. Right off the bat, we've got a Mercury retrograde from the 1st to the 25th, which will be a period of reflection and reconsideration. The past will come up in a very impactful way right now to be looked at, to be healed, and perhaps reincorporated. And we're in the middle of eclipse season, so things are already being shifted and rearranged in our lives for our greatest good to align us with our destiny, but it might feel uncomfortable or dramatic. Ultimate faith is needed right now as we're approaching the April 8th solar eclipse in Aries, which could bring a lot of potential chaos for the world but in our personal lives can bring a lot of potential for growth for a faded new beginning for the opportunity to step into our greatest power and to become the spiritual warriors that we came here to be chiron the asteroid known as the wounded healer will be exactly conjunct this eclipse so you better believe that this new beginning will be extremely healing for all of us and to top it off the biggest most anticipated planetary conjunction is also happening this month on april 20th jupiter and uranus will align in the sign of taurus this alignment only happens every 14 years and it hasn't happened in the sign of Taurus since 1941. So you can expect massive changes in the world and in your personal life. Huge breakthroughs and innovations, greater understanding, life-changing ideas, revolutionary events will unfold. And if you want to know how each of these transits are going to affect you personally, I have a yearly horoscope on my app, Astrobella, so go check that out. Embrace yourself because April's not joking around. It's going to turn everything upside down, but you have the opportunity to greatly improve your life if you know how to work with this energy. And by the end of the month, your life could look completely different. All right, let me go back to let me go back to what she said is coming this planetary alignment because I want to I want to I want to put that in layman's terms for you guys, okay? Because this is a part of this Aries North Node War energy. Let me let me put this back in here, okay? All right, let me put this up one more time. This month on April 20th, Jupiter and Uranus will align in the sign of Taurus. This alignment only happens every 14 years, and it hasn't happened in the sign of Taurus since 1941. Do you? All right, so I'm going to stop right there. Jupiter and Uranus conjunct in the sign of Taurus. They're aligned in the sign of Taurus, and this hasn't happened in the sign of Taurus since 1941. Let's explain a couple things. What was going on in 1941? World War II. World War II. Let me look at something, because if I still got this window open, let me see if I still got my North Node uh, calendar open here. Uh Let's see if I still have that open. 1941. What what was the North Node in? This, let, me, let me see if that's uh, relevant. Uh, Libra Aries. Nah, that's not what I'm looking for. But this is what's interesting about that. Here is what's interesting. Let me stop sharing. Because this is what Matt thinks is on deck. And then I'm going to read some comments. And then we're going to get out of here. She said, LOL. And New York slang made me laugh. Um, I didn't know about the 420 line. I don't even remember what I said, Lady Dagger Status. I don't even remember what I said. But um, it just comes out. It comes out. You know how New Yorkers are when you get passionate. It just comes out. But, yo, so here's the thing. Jupiter, the planet of expansion, the planet of abundance, okay? The planet of expansion, the planet of abundance, okay? And then Uranus is the revolutionary. It rebels. It rebels against the status quo. It, it 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 disrupts it it is like nah we're gonna do this a different way okay uranus is the energy of rebellion jupiter is the energy of expansion now those two coming together jupiter is what it is an amplifier anything that jupiter touches energetically it amplifies this is stupid okay <laughs> i can't turn it off sorry i can't turn it off i can't turn this is who i am so I, I'm a product of my environment. All right. All right. Here we go. Um, but yeah. So anybody that you notice the Sagittarius rising, it's like everything they touch turns to gold. It's a blessing. Being a Sagittarius rising is a blessing because the chart ruler is Jupiter, which means everything in that natal chart is amplified. Regular energy for somebody else is going to be amplified for a Sagittarius rising. Why? Because Jupiter is the ruling planet for Sagittarius. So when it's in the first house, it becomes the ruler of the entire chart. And you have this expansiveness, this expansive energy. Now, this is what that looks like with regards to what is going on. 
Number one, you guys have heard me talk about this over a number of videos. The North Node currently, which is the node of destiny for the planet, is in the sign of Aries. Aries is the energy of conflict, war, um, going at it, going for what you want, taking charge, fiery, passionate Aries. Okay, ruling planet Mars. Mars in mythology is the energy of war. Okay, we know that we've been at war since this, not we, but there's been a lot of conflict in a lot of places on planet Earth since the North Node shifted from the sign of Taurus to the sign of Aries back in July of last year, last summer. Okay, now. You have the North Node in Aries. There's a bunch of fighting. With this Jupiter and Uranus meeting in the sign of Taurus, Taurus is the ruler of the second house. So Taurus is the energy of acquisitions. It's the energy of material gain, possessions, mine, okay? You got Jupiter, the expander, the amplifier, lining up with the rebel, with the revolutionary. Uranus is the energy of revolution as well. So you've got Uranus. I grew up calling it Uranus. I know why they don't want to say Uranus, but everybody got one. So Uranus, all right? Uranus and Jupiter in the sign of um, Taurus, to me, says when that conjunction happens later this month, look for some entity, some country, some warring country, somebody somewhere on this planet. Look for them to try to make a huge land grab. Or grab of something. It could do. Uh, uh, Taurus also has to deal with fin finance. It also has to do with deal with finance. So we could see something in the area of revolution and expansiveness, amplified revolution in the area of finance, in the area of land, material gain. Taurus is, is is an earth sign, so that's about land as well, land possession. So with us being at war with the North Node being in Aries and an eight year. I think that something is going to jump off somewhere later this month when that conjunction happens where somebody either tries to seize land or we see some revolutionary shakeup in the area of financial markets. It's right there. Jupiter, the expander, the amplifier, Uranus or Uranus for those of y'all that don't think you have an anus. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, um, <laughs> I'm glad this is late night, all right, y'all. Anyway, anyway, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to laugh at that. Okay, I feel better. I feel better. 420 is the Bitcoin having interesting, interesting lady dagger status. Is that right? <sighs> well, with Uranus, 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 damn, forget it, whatever. U R A N U S, um, conjuncting Jupiter. In the sign of Taurus, that has huge implications. And let us not forget that they're talking about that this BRICS thing is still looming. This BRICS currency thing is still looming. But it could also be a land grab. So maybe there's a country that's at war right now or is about to go to war, is about to seize some major land. All of this is happening in April. This is this is an April to remember, y'all. This is going to be an April to remember. So that's that is match take on this planetary conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus. All right. I talked about that last week when we talked about the North Node. And, and, and why do I talk about these planetary transits? Y'all know that my, my stick with astrology is natal chart. I want people, I, I, I like to help people identify who they are, why they're here, or solve problems using their own natal chart astrology and their placements to help them have a better understanding of who they are and what they, you know, what they might be going through and with, with the intent of solving a problem. I don't deal too much with the, with the transits and such, because that's more forecasting and I don't have a problem with that. That's just not my personal stick, but I do understand it. So here's the thing. What you got to understand is that in the same way that you have meteorologists who cover the weather and they forecast the weather, why do you need a weather forecast? Because it's going to help you plan your day. It's going to help you plan your movements. If I don't know a pop-up thunderstorm is going to going to come at 7 a.m. and I get my lawnmower out at 6:45, I'm going to be stuck in the rain. I had no business. I should have just waited a day for the grass to dry to to get out there and cut it. So that that is how meteorology works. You want to know 
listen, if you know there's going to be a blizzard somewhere and you're traveling, you don't want to drive through that blizzard. So you're like, you know what? I better stay at home this day. That is why people consult with a meteorology or a weather report. A cosmic uh, transit report is the same thing. But guess who benefits from it? These countries, the, these leaders, these world leaders, they plan around that because astrology transits is simply the weather of the cosmos. It's the weather of the cosmos. So guess what? It is auspicious to do certain things when there are certain cosmic alignments because of the energy that's being given off. This is why they do these things. This is why Rome waited until airy season to invade the walls of Jerusalem back in 70 AD. Somebody somewhere probably told that general, hey, it is going to be more auspicious for you to invade once the um, season changes from Pisces to Aries. Why? Well, because Pisces is a spiritual sign and these are spiritual people. This attack could fail if you try to attack them during Pisces season. So wait until Aries season and you're going to get the amplification of the North Node being in Aries. That's the best time for you to attack. Okay, boom. What do they do? They attacked during Aries season, during an Aries North Node. What came after Aries? The siege ended up lasting five months, but they went through the whole summer and they mopped up at the end of the summer going into the fall. Five month siege. But it began and the backbreaking work was done during Aries season. So this is why these world leaders wait until certain cosmic conditions before they do things. So if you see news of something huge happening in the financial markets or some warring country grabbing a huge chunk of land or something like that or acquiring land after when, when this conjunction happens, you're going to know why. This is why these world leaders consult with astrologers because they're the meteorologists of the cosmos. All right. She said, um, wow, people don't want to know about their birth charts, but they look at the weather report daily. Isn't that a similar concept? Sort of. Sort of. The birth chart is more is more germane to you. However, knowing the moon cycles can help you too. I was wondering why for the past couple of days I've been in some IDGAF energy and I couldn't I couldn't figure out why I was in that energy. And then I pulled up a website. I'm going to show it to y'all because some of y'all might want to write it down. I'm going to show this one to y'all. Uh, where is it? Let me see. Right here. This will be the last thing I'll share with you guys, and then um, then we'll get ready to wrap up. Okay. So this is uh, moontracks.com slash Luna Ingress. I'm going to put that in the uh, chat for you guys, and you can you can save this. She said, OMG, yes, LOL, just warning people, I don't have time for nonsense lately. This is why I tell people, uh, Lucy's dreams, yo, 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 Lady Dagger status, yo. I've been having some crazy lucid dreams for the last two nights. The last two nights, crazy, crazy, okay? um, Just revelations coming in dreams. Like, you don't ask for this stuff, you just close your eyes. But that is your astral body having a different experience. Anyway. So I, I just put the link in the uh, chat for y'all, Lunar Ingress on uh, off of uh, Moontracks.com. This is when I figured out why I've been in this energy. The moon entered Pisces, and this is uh, this is UTC time, I think. So they're like, uh, UTC time is four hours behind Eastern time. So this where it says 4 a.m. here, that's UTC time. That means it was, it was where it says 4.05, that was 12.05 uh, a.m. in uh, East Coast time. Okay, so... The moon entered Capricorn. Capricorn, in the moon being in Capricorn, is a little bit of a cold type of energy. Okay, um, it's 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 not warm. Okay, and then when you get into Pisces, Pisces is the rebel, the rebel with a cause. So, I could not figure out why I've been in that energy lately, and I was like, man, what is going on? Is it the moon? The moon is the ruler of the of the emotions. The moon is the planetary ruler of the emotions. The moon is the ordinance that rules over the emotions. So. I looked at that sign, Aquarius. No wonder I'm in some IDGAF energy and I'm I'm just like, yo, I ain't about no games right now. But 
again, this is why I tell people don't you got to be careful. And we're in a we're in a uh, mercury retrograde. So you also have to, you know, make sure that your 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 communication is being understood correctly because you don't want to give off any misunderstandings during a mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde. Mercury is a planet that rules communication. So you, those are things to consider as well. But I looked at this and I said, huh, moon and Aquarius. No wonder. But I tell people, don't get too caught up in your feels because they're going to change every two and a half days. They're going to change every two and a half days with the moon sign. OK, so that that's just something I wanted to share with you guys. Um, Let me read some final comments. And then if you guys got any questions again, I'm going to end by saying this. The war is already won. But I'm talking about the spiritual war. What is written will be. What is written will be. This is why I told y'all, man, um, anything you're trying to manifest in your life. I put that video out a few weeks ago. Uh, write it. See it. Say it. Hear it. Write it. See it. Say it. Hear it. When you write something down, writing what you want to happen in your life and putting it in a conspicuous place where you have to look at it all the time is one of the easiest ways to manifest. Because every time you when you whenever you write it, you're reading it, you're seeing it. And when you're seeing it, you're saying it. And when you're saying it, you're hearing it. That's the energy of the spirit. Y'all can see the title of this video and you can say it without moving your mouth. Y'all can read all of these comments and say all of these comments in this chat without moving your mouth. KRS one did a great video on that. He did a great video. Uh, y'all y'all uh, get on YouTube and type in KRS one rock star energy. Great, great example of that energy. The soul is eternal. You can say something without moving your lips. You can hear something that you say without moving your lips. So when you write it, you see it. When you see it, you hear it. Okay, when you see it, you say it. And when you say it, you hear it. So that's why I say, that's why I say that, y'all. Write it, see it, say it, hear it. Whatever is written is going to happen. If, 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 if a prophet wrote it, and God said it, and he was just writing under divine inspiration, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So if he said, I alone created these things, and it'll be me that destroys it, don't worry about whatever NASA doing. That they, 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 Y'all saw the word. Y'all saw the word, Nisha. Y'all saw it. To beguile, to deceive. Nasha. Nasa, Nasha. Same thing. Same energy. Same energy. To beguile and deceive. So if they saying it, this is, y'all, I'm going to give y'all this, this tip and I'm going to get ready to get off of here. You know how people sometimes, and a lot of us that 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 uh, grew up in, in church and and have religious backgrounds, and, uh, and I'm thankful, I'm very grateful for my background. You will never hear me talk bad about my my background or have shame shame with it i just have an understanding now of how things work at the umbrella level and i thank god for the awakening that is happening all around the world people of all walks of life are waking up to the truth and that's a beautiful thing that being said um um geez where was i going with this matt i was talking about nasha deceive beguile um my background in church geez i don't even remember why i was saying this y'all but uh It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. Uh, what was I saying? Let me go. Let me pull it up and look at it again. Maybe that's what I need to do. Um, to beguile, to deceive. Nasha, to beguile, to deceive. Um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Thank you, Father. So the thing is, you know how they, they say, you should say back in church, well, you know, the devil said that, da, 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 and that thing was in my head all, all, all day or all night. Let me tell you something, how I combated that. And I learned to combat this at an early age. I mean, back dating back to me being about 14 or 15, if I quote unquote hear the devil say, which is pretty much the lower, vi lower vibrational nature of yourself, which comes from places like doubt and fear, that's the real devil. You trying to manifest something and you hear something say, you ain't going to get that. That ain't no devil outside of you. That is your own lower vibrational nature in the emotion of fear and doubt. That's all that is. I did a whole video on that. I did a whole video. But anyway, getting back to my point. I used to often say that if the devil can only lie, then the devil messes up when the devil speaks to me because I know the opposite to be true. I know the opposite to be true. So somebody take that with you. If the quote unquote devil tells you something, 
look at the opposite because the opposite is true. If all the devil can do is lie, then the truth must be the opposite thing. When you learn to master that mentality, the devil gonna stop talking to you. He's gonna talk to you a lot less. He may not stop, but he's gonna talk to you a lot less. He'll say, man, he figured me out again. You can't do another lie. You know what the scripture says? The father, he's a the liar and the father of it. The father of lies. So, so basically, the father is the conceiver. He's not the conceiver, but it's the it's the divine spark. <laughs> he shoots that load. And then you got to you got to not let it take root. You got to let not let it fertilize your thoughts. Don't let that lie fertilize the ovum of your thoughts or your reality. Because if it does then it take takes root and then it becomes each and every one of us is the seed of our father. Each and every one of us is the seed of our father. Forget what these modern day people are saying about you are the seed of your your mother ain't seed. The mother's not the seed. It's the land. Land is feminine. The seed, the seed, even though the seed comes from the tree, the seed is masculine. Okay? Land is what it is. You drop an orange seed in some land, you're going to get an orange. You are the seed of your father. You drop an apple seed in some fertile land, you're going to get apples. You're the product of the seed. You're the combination of the seed and the ovum, but you're the product of the seed. So, if the father of lies, if you know that the quote unquote, the quote unquote devil is the father of lies, then when the devil speak to you, then 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 take courage and be of good cheer because you know the opposite to be true. When I got that diagnosis right, right there, <laughs> when I got that diagnosis back in 2011, here come the devil, man. You know, bro, if you don't do something quick, man, you might not be here. I said, okay, that means I'm gonna live through the, through this. I'm good. I can lay my head down at night and sleep well. I don't necessarily know how I'm going to get to this outcome. But I know the outcome I'm going to arrive at. No man can take that away from me. Why? Well, I know what God promised me. He said, if I honor my mother and my father, my days are going to be long. I've honored my father, my mother and my father. And 38 is not, is not old. I was 38 when I got diagnosed. 37 when I started feeling symptoms. So I already knew. Death wasn't my end. Why? Because I followed that instruction, that divine instruction. Honor your mother and father and your days will be long. So I already knew that, quote unquote, an early death was not my portion. So when the enemy came in my ear with, if you don't do this thing we're telling you could do to do, you could die. I'm like, that just means I'm going to live. Thank you for telling me. And, and thank you for disqualifying yourself as my physician during this journey. Thank you. You've just disqualified yourself. Peace. Get out of here. I'm not talking to you. No, you won't earn for my insurance company on my behalf on this surgery because you're not touching me. Next. Who's next? Father, send me who you want to come into my life. And do the surgery because I can't choose a surgeon. I'm over two. I don't trust any of them. And that 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 sparked a chain reaction of events that had me under the knife of the number two surgeon in the southeast. And he wasn't an oncologist, and that was what I prayed for. I said, Father, I don't want a surgical oncologist. Surgery and 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 cancer do not go together for me. That means they're gonna be cutting me open looking for something. Just give me a general surgeon if I have to go under the knife. That is going in looking for where the problem is. I don't want to give away the book. It's a powerful story. It's a powerful story. When the devil speaks to you, if you know he's the father of the lie, then the opposite must be true. Somebody take that. Somebody needed that. Y'all take that with you. Keep that in your back pocket. That's a punch that's always going to deliver. That's a punch that's always going to daze your spiritual opponent. That's a powerful punch. Keep that with you. When the devil speaks to you, the opposite must be true. Thank you, Lady Dagger Status. So on that note, family, I'm going to give you all y'all time back. And I'm going to try to get my little uh, my little uh, Duolingo lesson in before the clock strikes 12. Because um, <laughs> I got uh, this, this thing. I haven't done my Spanish lesson for today. And I don't want to use well, use up one of my freezes. Y'all, if you've never used Duolingo, it's a great free app for language learning. Um I've, French was very easy on there. I started with French and I kind of got off of it. Spanish comes second nature for me, just where I grew up. I've been learning and speaking a little bit of Spanish, dabbling in that since I was little. Um, tried to learn a little bit of Hebrew, kind of got away from it because I just it doesn't resonate with the ancient. But I may pick it back up. I don't know, just because I don't like to quit on anything I started. So I may I may pick it back up. But modern Hebrew is not the ancient tongue. It's not. 
Um, and that's what kind of just kind of bored me with it, really, because I know it's not the ancient tongue. But anyway, to each his own. Duolingo Spanish is fun. It is fun. It is fun. Jojo, thank you, brother. I didn't know you was out there. I didn't know you were out there. I have to go back through the uh through through the uh through the comments. Appreciate you, Jojo Mac. Lady Dagger status. Uh 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 who else? Who else in here? Who else in here? Um Ali Rule, thank you for showing up. Uh TLJ, brother, thank you for all of the the um I think that's I think that said that right, brother. I can't tell by looking at that um at that thumbnail. So I so my my apologies. That thumbnail is really small. You know what? Let me do this. Cause I'm I'm gonna get this right right now. Let me see. Let me zoom in. Oh, sister, sorry, sorry, Till Jade, sorry, sorry, sister. Okay, these 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 thumbnails be too small, man. Y'all be messing with me, man. Hot shot. Thank you for coming through. Hot shot. Okay, Lady Dagger status Pharmacia. Thank you so much for that. That was the word I was looking for. Um. Um, all of y'all, man, I got nothing but love for you, baby. Uh -huh, I got nothing. Mega tomorrow, thank you for coming in tonight. Um, uh, man, all of y'all, I love y'all, man. I really, really, with Sacred Boxing, thank you for coming through, man. I love each and every last one of y'all, man. Listen, if you have not done, done so already, please hit that like button. Give me a like if you like this video. And if you're new to my channel and you enjoy being entertained, educated, uplifted, inspired, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn your notification bell to all so you'll be notified when i drop new content especially live because i'm doing way more lives these days than i'm doing um on demand content just that i don't lately i haven't had the time to do the editing and all the other stuff which i love but i haven't had the time to do it so y'all make sure you have that notification bell turned to all and um yeah man uh last but not least y'all tell somebody you love them and mean it how do you mean it you have to show it love is a verb it is a noun as well but when we focus on the verb the noun always takes care of itself. I love you guys. Thanks for thanks for coming. And maybe we'll see you again in a couple of days. I'm still I'm still keeping with the weekend live. This was just something I had to come in here and do tonight. So I appreciate y'all coming in here with me tonight. I hope y'all got something out of this. If, if nothing else, I hope that you leave here with the courage that regardless, come what may, on April the 8th, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Keep that with you, okay? That's your reality. Manifest that. It is already so. you already all right. Whatever, whatever events are going to happen on April 8th have already been determined in the ether. So don't worry about nothing nobody out here doing. You're going to be all right. Just don't fall for the BS. Keep your vibrations high and you repel low vibrational energy. That always happens, all right? High vibration always wins. Light always beats out darkness, all right? I love you guys. I got a new comment. Let me look, let me read one more comment. Okay, okay, got y'all. You're welcome, Allie. Thank you. You're so welcome. Uh, bonus live. That's right. That's right, Lady Dagestas. Y'all know how we do it. Y'all know how we do it. Hot shot, no doubt. Appreciate you. Love you guys so much. Y'all have a good night. Peace, family.